It's a great day. My name is Jay Brown, the happy entrepreneur, and welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're really on a mission, by the way, and our mission is to empower, our mission is to inspire, and our mission is to provide you, that's right, you, the hard-working entrepreneur, with all of the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you would call to serve. And on this episode, we have the one and only Dr. Jennifer Bryant or Dr. Jennifer Jones Bryant. She's in the building and she'll be talking about authentic leadership. What's going on, Dr. Jennifer? How are you? I am well, I am well. Every time you do your introduction, I am, I grin from ear to ear because I'm like, all of a sudden, I feel really happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should. I mean, I, I've had a chance to break bread with you, had a chance to see you in person, and it's so good to be on this other side, by the way. And for those folks that are watching, you've got authentic leadership. And I just, before we get started, I think the first question I think is really relevant is leadership means a lot of different things. I mean, to a lot of different people. But when folks ask, what is Dr. Jennifer's definition of leadership, and what does it look like these days? So you're absolutely right. And um, leadership historically has gone through so many definitions from autocratic to democratic to um, laissez-faire to participatory. I will say from my lens in the last couple of decades is that I focus on the human side of leadership, the people side. And you may ask, what exactly does that mean? That means that I'm there actively listening to the employees. I'm listening to others with a lens of you are important to me. Nothing else is distracting me in the moment. I respect you. I'm showing up in transparency which is I'm giving you the context of the why behind assignments. Um, I'm also um, celebrating you, recognizing you for your accomplishments and I'm not stealing your ideas. Um, that's, that's important. Um, and then I'm not the smartest person in the room. Um, so that comes with, you know, these not stealing ideas, the integrity piece, but also being humble enough to say, I'm not the smartest people in the room. And so my biggest goal has been, you know, how can I elevate others to give others the shine? Because I've been in this business 37 years. It may not look like it, but I've been in this business for a very long time. You know, as you were speaking, that's incredible. Um, why are leaders struggling these days just to be good leaders? And I guess the question really is, you've, you've watched a number of folks. So uh, maybe there's good leaders or great leaders. Maybe, and then maybe there's effective leaders, right? So why do folks struggle so much in the area of leadership? It seems to me that they should be able to tell everybody what to do. And everybody falls in lines and follows them. Or they should just do it naturally. So here's the question directly. Why are leaders struggling these days to get folks to follow them? Yeah, that's interesting, and um, that that's a loaded question. Um, it, it becomes about, one, can you be a follower? See, this goes back to being humble. Can you follow others? The other piece is, most impor importantly, is spending the time to invest in self to define who you are as an individual and have self-awareness in terms of what excites you, and then also what are your triggers? and to make sure that you are not, and you've heard me say this before, that you have not um, part of your healing journey, that you're not spilling over on your teams and causing them angst and frustrations because there are pieces inside of you that you have not healed. Um, so it's important as you are gaining followers to make sure that you show and demonstrate and lead by example that you also can uh, be a follower. Um, it, it, it's come a time, particularly with the diverse generations that has entered the workforce or that may be on your team, this new generation is not having it. Like you are not gonna sit there and just tell them what to do one through 10. But there's beauty and there's magic that comes about when you allow folks to use their innovation, 
to think outside of the box and to be super creative. Um, you can provide, as I mentioned earlier, the why and the intent, but there's something about folks getting a blank canvas and being able to color outside of the lines and bringing that to them, to you as a leader without penalty and being rewarded for that. And we'll get in a moment your backstory and who you are, because I'm sure folks are probably curious, but you mentioned two words. You mentioned um, it, it could trigger something inside of them. And someone listening to me said, trigger something. What does she mean by trigger something inside them? If you take a moment and you, you know, kind of peel the onion a little bit on that word trigger and yeah. why that's so important, number one, for the leader and for someone who's trying to manage their leader. You heard this whole manage your manager. It's been I don't yeah, know, 20 years since I've been in that, in that thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so frame the frame trigger for us so we understand that and then look at it from two perspectives, trying to work with someone and trying to, I don't know, manage the manager or, or the trigger for the manager is trying to lead. Because I think that's a very important part. Yeah, that is. It's interesting that that, that was the word that um, stuck with you. Trigger in terms of if you have not dealt with past traumas, whether it's work trauma, professional trauma or personal traumas, it can rise above up if someone approaches you a certain way um, who may not um, deal with you on a level that you would like, then all of a sudden those internal stories stop start popping back up again. And next thing you know, your behaviors may manifest in a way that's displeasing. And it may be um, your lack of confidence may be oh, I will now be a micromanager. I want to look at everything that you're doing because I want to feel like I'm in control of this because maybe the leader had gotten burnt at one point and they want to make sure that never, ever happens again. Um, there may be other triggers uh, or other behaviors that show up where they may be talking to their employees in a um, unpleasant manner. Um, I'll be yelling, demeaning, um, not giving them the opportunity to shine. So those, that's what I meant by triggers, like little things or big things that may rise up with inside of you because they're undealt with, right? They haven't been dealt with. And so that's why it's important as a leader. And I would say to everyone to make sure you have your board of directors of, um, and you get to decide, you know, for me personally, as a therapist, as a coach, um, it could be um, uh, someone from your church uh, or whatever your faith may be. Um, having a mentor is incredibly important. They want to know who are you now, Dr. Jennifer Jones Bryant. They've heard you speak. It says sounds important. Sounds like you know what she's talking about, Shay, but take a moment. What's her what's her backstory? by the way. So, you know, the question, who are you? What's the backstory? And then what was that defining moment that led you to doing what you're doing now? Oh my goodness. It's, it's, I've been on this leadership thing for like a couple of decades. And I will tell you, I uh, moved my career from being a clerk typist in the federal government during the day janitor at night and then eventually evolving to an executive when I left the government, which is tremendously hard being a black woman um, and, and achieving that. But I had a lot of folks who helped me along the way. And I'm going to tell you my backstory because I'm big on sharing lessons. Um, I think it's incredibly important to be relatable to folks because sometimes people will see leaders as, oh my God, they've never done anything wrong. Um, they're unstoppable, they're invincible, but that is far from the truth. Um, I got into this leadership space, studying leadership and wanting to be better. And I'm not perfect, but I will say um, over 15 years ago, I was in a detailed assignment um, in the federal government and I was in this leadership role for over a year. And I was leading a team of uh, business operations um, for transportation security organization, policy organization. And when it was time for them to select the permanent leader, guess what? I was not selected. And the other piece of that is that 
I did not respond well. And you may ask, what was my response to that? Because I was working 14 hours a day. Um, I was sacrificing um, being with my family because I really was chasing this, um, this goal of being selected for this role. So when the leader called me in and she told me that news, my response was to try to learn more, right? Obviously as to the why. And she couldn't really put her finger on it. And um, her response was, well, there are certain people who think that you have an attitude. And, and, and then, you know, there was a question about your leadership. And I just sat there for a second. And in that moment, that changed a lot for me because guess what? My response probably aligned with her feedback because my response, I began to tell her about herself and her lack of leadership. And I wasn't able to receive the feedback. And um, and not and it didn't just end there. I actually left for the day with tears in my eyes, running to my office, knowing other people are watching, but I didn't care in that moment. And I went home and I wrote a scathing email to her. And had I had a mentor at that time, I they would have told me not to send it. And I pressed send. And I sent it to her and everything. So I felt like, oh, I'm vindicated. How dare she? You know, I spent a year doing this, that, and the third. How dare she do that to me? And I felt so victimized in that moment. And Jay, even it goes even further that that evening, after she told me who was going to sit in the role, she calls me and goes, um, well, that person did not accept the role. And I need you to go back and serve in an acting capacity. And I was like, what? You got to be kidding me. So you're telling me again that I'm I'm good enough to act in the role, but I'm not good enough to for the permanent role. And you're gonna get, you know, you're gonna try to hire someone else. And so they did put um eventually uh one of my colleagues in the role. He and I had a good relationship. Um, I was his deputy. He said to me, look. I don't know this business ops business, um, so I'm going to need to rely on you. And so, in that moment, I said, "Look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be there for you. I'm gonna show you the ropes. You learn from me, and I'll learn leadership from you." And so, that is how that worked. And then the woman who shared with me that I was um, did not get the job, she went off to retire. But before she left, she saw the evolution in me and in the transformation. She told me, you will do well, and I know you will do well. And we made up, and it was all good. And so when the new guy came in, when I had my one-on-one with him, I said, look, I know that you've probably heard stories about me, and I'm not going to say anything negative about anybody. I really want the director role when it becomes available. What I will ask of you is just observe me, observe my results, and, and, and just watch. And, and if there are developmental opportunities, please tell me. So, Che, after six months, he called me in his office and he said, guess what? I'm going to put this, this guy who's the current director back in his former role, and I'm going to um, slide you in the job without competition because you have shown and proven that um, you can do this job. So it took mentors, it took sponsors, it, it took me being able to receive feedback. So that's my aha moment. That's the story behind my Step Into Leadership Greatness Foundation and in my books that I have surrounding that. Yep. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for being so transparent and congratulations to you, by the way. Um, you're now on the other side, helping yes. so many other leaders become great leaders. You know, they're reading the, the headline and many of them are saying, wow, she, she said authentic leadership and she talked about integrity. Why was that so important? I mean, you said authentic leadership. You didn't say just be a leader. You said be an authentic leader. 
why authenticity and why in front of leadership is the adjective when you could have mentioned a whole lot of other things? Um, because it goes back to finding out who you are truly to your core and showing up in a professional setting as authentic as possible. Um, so people know, like, you know, I've had leaders who said to me, even in the corporate space, Jen, just show up as you because you want folks to see you as you and it, and it won't become so exhausting. Um, yes, you've heard, probably heard the term code switching. That happens, right? There's a certain game that you have to play when you're in the professional setting, but there's also the fact that you want to know who you are, who, what are your core values that's incredibly important to identify those so you can show up authentically yourself so for me it's about god first right family and then um focusing on my other values which is work-life integration um being um inclusive and i have a you know some other values that i bring but I also make sure that that manifests and shows up, up with my teams. Mm. What do you enjoy most about what you're doing these days? Oh my goodness. That's a great question. So I recently left the corporate spaces and I plan to get into corporate spaces in a different way, which is operating my business full time, which is reaching within an empowerment journey where I'm doing leadership coaching and mentoring training and a host of other services that I provide. Um, and so I've been enjoying pacing myself and being intentional about what I say yes to. I've been intentional over these last five years, but I've been doing it even more so now. Um, and so not rising super early in the morning, but early enough, early enough. So I've been enjoying managing my own calendar. Ah, so cool. So <laughs> nice. It's, it's a good segue, by the way, to a, a segment I have here called Today Is my January 1st. Now, for those folks that are watching, you know what we're about to do. You can even say those magical words. Today is my January 1st. I know you wait for that. Happy, happy new year to you, by the way. And for all the other folks that are tuning in for the very first time, welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur family. Uh, today is my January 1st. It, it's, a, it's our personal mantra here. It, it represents a fresh start. It represents a, a do over. It, it means our past, no matter how dark and gloomy that past may be, or how bright, maybe you had a bright, you've had a sunny past. The past doesn't equal the future. And so my question for you, Dr. Jennifer Jones, Brian on the other side is twofold. Number one, when you hear those words, today is my January 1st, what do you hear? And number two, what was another challenge or setback you had in your life? And how did you bounce back from it? So I, I will tell you like, if, if today was January 1st, as you had mentioned, I would embrace it with, oh my goodness, I get a new start. I would be so grateful for the fact that I'm still here. I get to make a difference in others' lives. I get to make a difference in my own life. And so I am like, it's one of those things that I don't necessarily have to wait to January 1st because every day I, I show my appreciation and gratitude and reflect on all the great things that are happening um, in my life. So yes, January 1st comes, I'm, I'm out the door and I'm like super grateful thinking about what is my next impact that I am going to make on others. Um, I continue to say that you are interviewing every day and remembering that your why, your big why must be bigger than your ego. It has to be. Mm, so true. So true, by the way. And, you know, one of the things, the question I love to ask, and we have time now, is yeah. what's one of the best pieces of advice you've ever been given, by the way? And I always frame it for the audience so they understand, you know, I'm not putting you on the spot to come up with like the answer of answers, right, to solve all problems. But, you know, you had a lot of mentors. You mentioned a couple along this journey. I know you've read probably countless books. You, you now help other folks step into greatness and organizations and companies and leaders. So the question is, if you had to reach out, and look back in time and say, man, this is one of the best pieces of advice I've ever been given that you want to share with the audience. What is that advice and why? 
I will tell you, um, it's the rubber balls versus the glass balls. Mm. <laughs> You're like, huh, what does that mean? This goes back to my point about your values and focusing on those glass balls. You get to identify what those glass balls are. For me, it's my faith, it's my family, and it's everything else, right? Your finances and everything else. And that's where you need to focus. Your rubber balls are things that can come back. You could take a look in terms of your prioritization and say, do I continue that? Do I stop that? Or will it bounce back? So it's about your rubber balls versus your glass balls. And, and for you to take stock of which items are your rubber balls. So that's the lens that I, how I look at things in terms of, is it my rubber ball or my glass ball? Mm, I love it, man. That's, that's, that's spot on. Thanks so much for sharing. Certainly appreciate that. And what does success look like for you these days? Um, you're going to be doing some cool things. Um, you're helping companies and organizations. You also get some time with yourself. What does success look like for you? Success looks like for me, and we know the success is defined relative, you know, to yeah. myself. Glad you asked it that way. Success for me, again, managing my own calendar, putting self first because I've served so many for so many years, for 37 years nearly, that I'm like, yes, I get to bet on me and I get to say yes to me. So success is waking up and I started this routine within this last year with having an uh, executive coach, which is waking up, reflecting, looking at, for me, looking at my Holy Bible verse, um, looking into my Calm app, um, having my Zen moment. I want to get out and walk more during the week. Um, I, my goal is to do um, at least four times a week. I used to do it more, but that is a goal for me in terms from a success um, wheelhouse in terms of my health, uh, making sure that that is you know, well-managed and spending more time with my husband. He retired a month ago. So we've been, you know, having fun, enjoying each other's company. Um, so that's what success and being there for my daughters. And that's, that's, that's what matters. Like as long as my Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is food, um, housing, clothing, you know, I'm good. I'm good. It's a, it's, a, it's a good place to, to be in, by the way. And as, as you go about, you mentioned going into organizations and you mentioned a nonprofit. Obviously, we're all nosy. We're looking behind you, see all the awards behind you on your wall and so forth. We're like, Usually so I had she, that blurred. <laughs> yeah, they're looking at it. awards blurred <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There, there she goes looking cool back there. So there, like Shay, she mentioned this nonprofit, but she kind of glossed over it. So, you know, what is this mission she has? What is this nonprofit? What is it all about? And what will it be doing? So this nonprofit I just launched um, recently within the last uh, six months. It's called Step Into Leadership Greatness Foundation. Um, and it focuses on equipping and enabling your emerging leaders or aspiring leaders or first generation leaders um, and equipping them with the information through mentorship, um, workshops and scholarships. So we're looking, myself and my board, we're looking to award some scholarships um, next year. So more info to follow on that. Uh, I will be announcing the board members probably within this next month. So we're all eager to sit down and, and, and make a difference in, in our first generation leaders. And I will be doing this in honor of my mom. My mom had a fifth grade education. She had an amazing high emotional um, IQ uh, before she was diagnosed with uh, manic depression and bipolar. Um, but she had an amazing IQ and I'm first generation um, college student myself. So I wanted to award college students in honor of my mom. Uh, how, how special is that, by the way? I uh, mentioned your mom and I know we're coming down the home stretch, but, you know, you learn a lot of lessons from mother. Um, what's one of the lessons you, you learned from your mom that sticks top of mind to you right now? Do you want to pass on to the audience? 
So I will say that um, be okay with who you are. You are good mm. enough. You're good enough. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's powerful enough all by itself, by the way. You're good enough. What do you do for fun? We're not out saving the world. You're not out just hanging around, <laughs> walking around the block or how far you walk these days. What are you doing for fun these days? That's funny. You said walk around the block. Because last year, I have to show you this. This was, I think, this was my marathon run, right? I did an 8K with one of my daughters. And that was one uh, of my Congratulations. Goals. Thank you. That was one of my goals. I was like, I'm going to get out there. I'm going to do this. So in terms of fun, I do. I enjoy movies, watching movies, all genre type of movies. You'll be surprised because I'm, you know, poised and graceful. But the type of movies I'm into, you'll be like, what? <laughs> so I enjoy that. I love comedy. Um, I also um, enjoy swimming. So um, sometimes to take this. The, the stress away or to balance my emotions, I may decide, hey, let me just put a bathing suit on, go hop in the pool um, at the local uh, sports and um, complex. And that's something that I enjoy. And I also enjoy Caribbeans, in the Caribbean. So if I'm near warm water and palm trees, I am in heaven. I enjoy uh, that a lot. Oh, uh, that's, got, that's kind of cool. Any take, take a place you like to travel to? You said the Caribbean, I think. Oh, geez. It, it doesn't matter. Like, I've been to the Bahamas probably five times. Um, my <laughs> hubby and I went to DR last year. Um, I've gone to, you know, just just various places. And I truly, truly, St. Martin, like, the water there is just immaculate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love it. I love it. If I can get on the water, I'm the exact same way. So congratulations. As we come down the home stretch, uh, two part question. Number one, what type of clients is your firm looking to work with these days, if any? And number two, how can folks best connect with you? How can it stay in this conversation over and beyond the time that you and I have right now? So um, some my clients like clients hire me to help uh, mid-career women elevate to the next level. So I bring visibility and I bring voice to them. And I do this through various ways, um, leadership coaching, um, leadership mentorship, as well as other um, ways in terms of team building. Um, and so I customize uh, packages for various corporations as well as coming in as a keynote speaker. So there are various ways and you can follow me on social media as Dr. Jennifer Jones Bryant. And my website is reachingwithinempowerment.com. Reachingwithinempowerment.com. Thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. I appreciate it. Can't wait to see you again because you're so local. So obviously I may get a chance to see you again. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You're welcome. And it was a great honor to be a part of your show. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. And thank you to viewers. Thank you for tuning in because without you, well, we don't have a show. So we appreciate you showing up. We love the comments. Like when you hit the like button, by the way. But I always say when you can, hit that share button. Just pay this message for If you're on one of those platforms, some of you are, are watching or listening on streaming platforms, you can't do that. But if you are in a position to do it, go ahead and do that. We appreciate that. And I never get tired of reminding you every night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time that you really are someone that's unique. You're someone that's special. I know it sounds so hokey dokey or it sounds so warm and fuzzy, but it is true that as you're on this planet right now, you're making an impact for someone, someplace. And no matter what you're going through right now, whether you're doing really, really well, and you're just going to that next level or life has hit you with the punch that you never saw coming. I believe that today is your January 1st. And because of just that one reason alone, your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. With that being said, my name hasn't changed. Still Che Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. We out of here. Peace, Doc. We'll see y'all later. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah.